had a guy on base, uh, Lou Brock, that had been causing me all sorts of problems stealing bases, and our ball club uh, all sorts of problems trying to keep him off the bases. And a line drive was hit to Willie, and at that point in time, we were really struggling. Uh, the throw was outstanding. I was very surprised that uh, Lou didn't slide. We all did things as a team. Uh, uh, I, I made the throw, but it was a combination of prehand, down work, Willie Horton, and, and the support of Mickey Stelling. <laughs> Nine years ago today, uh, the Detroit Tigers victory parade for the 1984 World Series started right behind us. At around 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the cars lined up behind us on Cochrane and turned out on the Michigan Avenue left and went into downtown Detroit uh, to the cheers of probably 250,000 people were lining the, the streets of both Michigan Avenue, uh, I think we turned on Cass, and then we turned on Congress and then left on Woodward to Kennedy Square uh, where all the presentations of the keys to the city from the mayor and the governor's proclamation and uh, the speeches from all the players and from Sparky Anderson took place at the end of the parade and, and I was there for all of it. It was, it was the best day of my life. I was 25 years old. 25 years old. Took the day off, obviously. Uh, yeah, I was. I worked at the stadium at that time. Did so, you? Yeah, I did. I was the Tigers locker room security guard. Okay. And uh, so, were you with the with the uh, entourage? I mean, you you yeah. just down to a science here. Yeah, I rode in the car with Sparky Anderson. No kidding. Yep, I sure did. It was the best day of my life. I I, I was going to ride in the bus with the rest of the employees, and uh, the director of the parade, Larry Johnson, walked up to me and said, "Hey, I got room for you in one of the cars." I said, "Okay." So I followed him out there uh, onto Cochran Avenue. We went to a couple of cars. Lopez's whole family was with him, and a couple of the other players, their whole faces. Oh, nobody's riding with Sparky. So we walk up to Sparky's cars, and before he could get the words out, Sparky grabbed my hand and said, Joseph, my boy, get in. Yeah, that was so Sparky. I mean, it's such a children, yeah. kid oriented inside. So you got to ride in the parade. Yeah. Holy yeah. mackerel. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing, amazing experience. It's, it's, it was like, uh, I said to him during the parade, I said, Skip, I says, pinch me because I can't believe that I'm sitting next to you. And he kept elbowing me in the ribs and saying, you're going to get late tonight, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask the follow-up question. <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> but yeah, it was the best day of my life. Well, tell me about the Goose Gossage pitch, Gibson home run. You must have been part of that. Well, I was standing at my job at the uh, upstairs, you know, in the clubhouse, 
and uh, we were watching on the monitor inside the locker room. And of course, I had Ernie Harwell on the radio too. So we would turn the sound down on the, you know, because none of us liked the announcers that Major League Baseball hired. So we'd turn up Ernie, and we would watch the monitors. And we all thought, just like Sparky, that uh, Gossage wasn't going to pitch to him. But when he did, and when that home run went off his bat and hit the seats up in right field, that locker room went insane. Boy, he's coming out. I can't believe he changes his mind. I can't believe. Guys that weren't playing that day that were in the locker room all went and ran down into the dugout to congratulate him. So I was basically standing there by myself after that home run, and I was the only one standing in the locker room. Everybody else ran down the tunnel and into the dugout to, to give him a high five. So you were responsible for uncorking the champagne? <laughs> well, I'll just tell you this. I uncorked a few bottles myself. I wasn't supposed to. I was supposed to be watching the door, but there's some video of me uh, inside the locker room. Uh, with some champagne, uh, both in me and on me. <laughs> I, I get, you know, I've got mixed emotions about being here. I mean, I love this place. That's why I come here. That's why I work on this field. Every Sunday we're down here doing our thing, making this place beautiful for whoever wants to stop out here. Um, and I'm sad that there's no stadium here anymore, but I'm grateful that we've been able to continue the tradition that millions of people uh, had before I, you know, landed on the planet that millions of people can still come here and enjoy this site.